are these people? It's really funny. When I was in seventh grade, and that was a lot of years ago, I'm not going to say exactly how many, but if some people know, um, I had a relatively activist, liberal lefty teacher that taught me about what happened at Leonard Peltier. And it's something that I've kept my eye on my, my whole adulthood. And he's been in prison my entire adulthood. And this really details the case of what happened and, and why he's in prison. All right. He was the leader of the American Indian movement, Leonard Peltier. He's serving two consecutive life sentences at the federal penitentiary in Leavenworth for two counts of first degree murder in the deaths of Ronald Arthur Williams and Jack Ross Kohler, uh, federal FBI agents. The Got to be handy with the steel if you know what I mean, earn you keep. The agents were killed during a shootout between the FBI and AIM on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota on June 26, 1975. The denial of Peltier's parole request is a continuation of the government vendetta against the 79-year-old activist for a crime he never committed. The World Socialist yep. website denounces the Parole Commission's decision and calls on workers and youth throughout the world to demand his immediate release, which we do. The shootout at Pine Ridge was the result of U.S. government repression and law enforcement provocations against Native Americans that reached a high point in 1973 after AIM organized the occupation of the town of Wounded Knee, South Dakota. Peltier, who was born in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and grew up on the Turtle Mountain Indian Reservation, became active in Native American social and political causes after he moved to Seattle in 1965. He joined AIM in 1972 after he learned of factional tensions at Pine Ridge. By the time he traveled to Wounded Knee in 1975 to deliver supplies to the occupiers, he had already been framed up for attempted murder of a police officer during an AIM protest outside the federal building in Milwaukee. He was later acquitted of this charge. They like to frame them up. According to government reports, the two FBI agents, Williams and Kohler, were killed after pursuing a red pickup or van at high speeds onto the Pine Ridge Ranch of the Jumping Bull family where AIM members and other Indians had encamped. It turned out that the vehicle they were chasing was a white over orange Chevy Suburban with three Native Americans in it, including Leonard Peltier. So what you're saying is he fit the description? Well, not just fit the description. He where was in that, the vehicle. Have where have we heard that before? No, he was right. in the vehicle. The agents were driving separate unmarked cars and got out of their vehicles with guns right. drawn while the Suburban also stopped and the occupants got out. A gunfight involving handguns and AR-15 assault rifles ensued with Native Americans from the camp joining in. Duh. That's, that's a heavy statement. I don't know what... 40 47 fucking shooters. Government Jesus documents Christ. allege that there were 47 shooters in all, including Peltier. But, but they're sure, they're sure that it was him. The FBI maintained that after both agents sustained serious wounds, an individual who was a Native American approached and fatally shot them both at close range with a high-powered rifle. Following the shootout, Peltier and several others fled to Canada. On December 22, 1975, he was named to the FBI's 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list. And on February 6, 1976, he was arrested along with Frank Blackhorse by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police at the Small Boys Reserve and Small Boy Camp, Camp Hinton in Alberta, Canada. He was Alberta. Alberta. He was then that transported. Was yep, he was then... <sighs> transported to Calgary and then taken to the Ocala prison farm in, in Vancouver, British Columbia in December, 1976. So like almost a year later, 10 months later, he was extradited to the U S from Canada based on documents supplied by the FBI, which were later shown to contain false, false information derived from coerced testimony. 
Man, where have we heard this before? Julian Assange. What? So many times. Okay. So many times. He was charged with executing two agents and put on trial in Fargo, North Carolina, uh, North Dakota, not North Carolina, Fargo, North Dakota, where Fargo the government where the government expected a supportive jury after the FBI launched a campaign to scare Fargo residents into thinking that the aim would descend on the town during the trial and carry out a massacre. That almost sounds like Chris Matthews. That almost sounds like Chris Matthews scaring the shit out of people about them being hangings in Central Park when Bernie Sanders was about to become the nominee. It's very similar type of fear monger language. SWAT teams were sent in to guard the jury 24 hours a day. Jury. Crazy. The jury conviction of Peltier on April 18, 1977, was the product of a U.S. government conspiracy. The trial included federal prosecutors hiding evidence that exonerated Peltier. The FBI threatened and coerced witnesses into lying who later recanted their testimony. The ballistics evidence that the FBI claimed linked Peltier to the crime was disrupted by experts, but this information was not disclosed during the trial. When the government's original case against Peltier fell apart after these facts came to light, it abruptly changed the charges to aiding and abetting whoever did kill the agents on the grounds that he was one of dozens of people present when the shootout occurred. And we believe that he was. But Leonard has maintained his innocence consistently over the decades. In 1999, he told CNN correspondent that I didn't kill those agents. I didn't see who killed those agents. And if I did know, I'm not telling. But I don't know, and that's the point. Peltier said he fired shots during the gun battle, but I know I didn't hit them. I know I didn't. Every legal attempt by Peltier and his attorneys to overturn his wrongful conviction has been denied by the U.S. court system. Go go figure. A previous parole request in 2009 was also denied. Meanwhile, campaigns for clemency from Democrat Bill Clinton in 2001 and a commuted sentence from Barack Obama in 2016 were, of course, denied just before each of them left office. Because they're fucking assholes that serve the same machine as the Republican fucking douchebags. And we're going to talk about all that later. They're no friend to anybody. But we all know that here. At every stage, a campaign by FBI agents was mounted to demand that Peltier be kept behind bars. Ridiculous. The deep state doesn't exist, right, folks? Peltier will be eligible for another parole hearing in June 2026, according to a parole commission representative, although he said 2039. Responding to the decision on Tuesday, Peltier's attorney, Kevin Sharp, said in a statement, quote, Today's announcement continues the injustice of this long ordeal for Leonard Peltier. This decision is a missed opportunity for the U.S. to finally recognize the misconduct of the FBI and send a message to Indian country regarding the impacts of the federal government's actions and policies of the 1970s, which have now been well documented and released. Hoover's dead. All these agents are mostly dead or long since retired, but none of these people can get any kind of restorative justice. It's, it's beyond disgraceful. In a statement... FBI director, remember, appointed by Donald Trump because nothing changes between administrations, Christopher Wray claimed, quote, no amount of prison time will ever change the facts surrounding the murders of special agents Kohler and Williams. Um, That's right. Nothing will Mm -hmm. ever change the facts. But yet you continue to hold this guy in prison when he didn't, you can't prove that he did the shoot. Well aware that he has been systematically denied his basic rights, Ray then went on to gaslight and assert that the political prisoner has been afforded due process time and again. Uh Uh-huh. 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 Whatever the fuck you say. Paul O'Brien, executive director of Amnesty International USA, which had representatives at Peltier's trial in 1977 and his long campaign for his freedom, said keeping him locked up is a human rights travesty, which it is. Quote, not only are these are there ongoing unresolved concerns about the fairness of his trial, he spent nearly 50 years in prison, is approaching 80, 
and is suffering from chronic health problems. So that's a total good reason to keep him locked up and spending all kinds of money of the public to, to keep him imprisoned and not getting the adequate care and away from his family, right? Insane. So he also wrote a statement out that I brought with me. Um, and this was published mm. in, in workers.org. And this published yesterday morning. And I believe it was the one minute statement. But this way, um, we can hear what he had to say. Hope is a hard thing here. But I always hold hope in you, my people. Pay attention. The parole decision on July 11th may show you what injustice truly means to this nation and whom it was meant for. He meant June 11th. Living in lockdown, time has twisted into something that has nothing to do with minutes, hours, or years. They've taken what little freedom I have outside this box. Art, gone. Ceremony, gone. Yet they will never take the spirit of a sun dancer. I've never given them my integrity. I remain undestroyed. I'm counting on you if this decision does not go my way. I always need your prayers. I need you to demand that this country finally commit one act of justice. And not force him to take some shit-ass guilty plea that fucking is a half measure oh. just to let him out, by the way. He says, my attorney assures me that the battle is not over until it's over. She will not back down. I'm counting on you to not back down. My time is running out here with no medical care. Thanks, Leavenworth. I do not fear death returning to Mother Earth's womb, but I do not want to die in lockdown. In my solitude, my mind often returns to Raymond Yellow Thunder. The profound tra tragedy of Raymond's murder sparked change in our people and showed them who the American Indian movement is. Raymond was a hardworking man. When he came into town to give money to his sisters, it was not enough for the Hare brothers to humiliate Raymond, strip him, and parade him around an American Legion dance. Raymond was shoved into the trunk of a car and died the next day. The Hare brothers were charged with second-degree manslaughter and released with no bail. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Raymond's sisters were distraught that even that small charge may not stick. The authorities would not release the autopsy report. They wouldn't allow Raymond's sisters to see his body. The sisters sought help from the Bureau of Indian Affairs, the BIA, the tribal government and private attorneys. In desperation, they turned to the American Indian movement. AIM members are spirit warriors, not merciless savages. We organized 200 carloads of people and demanded justice. With dignity, we demanded justice. Sheriff's deputies, state troopers, and FBI agents agreed that serious charges should be filed against the Hares and that the local police chief should be dismissed. Indigenous people started holding their heads up after that victory. They started speaking out against abuses by the BIA and tribal government and white ranchers profiting off their land. We must not allow Raymond's fate yep. to befall others. He says, again, this is Leonard Peltier in a letter to his tribe my mother, published yesterday. My mother used to ask with dismay, why is it so bad to be Indian? I find myself wondering why they hate us so. We will triumph over the misguided hate of others. Never, ever forget who you are. We are the first people. Mother Earth herself fires the blood that runs through our veins. Protect each other. Protect Mother Earth for future generations and stand with oppressed peoples everywhere. Remember that true strength does not reside in holding power over others. Strength comes from living out of a place of humility and integrity inspiring others to find their unique strengths. Oppression is rising, running like black mold through every facet of society. We must stand together and let society know that indigenous lives are not cheap. The lives of our oppressed brothers and sisters are not cheap. All people are worthy of basic human dignity. Colonialism has all but destroyed us. We must do nothing less than transform society into a place where human beings are not disposable. If you do not weep, if I'm not granted parole, cry freedom. 
Coalesce yourselves. Galvanize your relationships. Establish alliances. In, not, in the power of, of our people, we find strength. Hold your head up high. It's not over until it's over. In the spirit of Crazy Horse, Doksha, Leonard Peltier. Shit, man. Damn. Mm-hmm. 80-year-old man. 80 years old. Why? Right yeah. jail. Right away. Yeah, KYE so fucked up and sadistic. It's... Yeah. Uh, it is beautiful. I'm, I'm glad we brought it. <clears throat> you know, um, I'm not sure how many people are even going to read that. You know, at least on a stream, and I'm glad that that at least we did. Um, yeah. Yeah, a little heavy, sorry. Uh, I know that Misty has been incredibly vocal about keeping the pressure on, and she was organizing even during the, Assange, the, the final weeks of, of before Julian was released, organizing phone call campaigns and postcard campaigns to try to drum up more support and, and you know, to try to petition to grant parole. And it's, mm. it, it doesn't make any sense. Like we live in, in, in such a weird world. Like, <laughs> you know, you know, the Accord Lord <laughs> just dropped, just, just, just dropped some, some cash on there and, Want to give a shout out and a thank you to everyone else who's done that. And uh, if you want to join that that group, if you're able to, we really appreciate it. There's some ways to do that there. Cash dot app slash dollar sign indie news network or just the dollar sign indie news network on your phone. Patreon, PayPal, Rumble. Jack Jacqueline Jack is back on Patreon this week. She had some kind of thing with her credit card got hacked. We can't stand when that happens. I'm so sorry. We're glad to have you yeah. back. Thank you. Rumble.com slash C slash Indie News Network, I-N-D-I-E. 